creepy facts about the zodiac signs. Aries is obsessed with death. Taurus is a stalker. Gemini is a liar. Cancer is often very suspicious and paranoid. They didn't get to Leo. I'm a Leo, but the thing about Leos is they don't believe in astrology. I know that's an old joke. Interestingly, you know, one of the interesting things about being an activist skeptic for 30 plus years is that you get to see things come around again. I mean, back in the 80s and 90s, you know, we were dealing with astrology and UFOs. And then those topics kind of faded into the background and we turned over to dealing with global warming denial and vaccine denial and things like that. And now it's really interesting that the whole some of these things are coming back around again. The belief in astrology is taking off among millennials and Gen Zers uh, and blowing up on TikTok and elsewhere. And it's just incredible. So we have to dust off all of our old, you know, astrology uh, works and, and explain to a new generation how astrology is complete and utter nonsense. Uh, so what is astrology? I mean, it's the idea that the what's happening in the heavens, you know, in the sky can have an effect on our personality, our fate, our lives, whatever. Um, this sort of was what existed before astronomy existed, before we had any sense of how, you know, like the universe worked. Um, we confused constellations with actual things, you know, rather than it's just a perspective illusion from where we happen to be. Uh, we had no idea about how really far away these things were and how ridiculously small an influence they would have on us through any physical mechanism. So, yeah, astrology makes absolutely no sense. There's no potential mechanism for it. Um, the I liked, you know, again, scientist Carl, Carl Sagan, you know, famously said the gravitational influence of the obstetrician is greater on you at the time of your birth birth than the gravitational influence of any of the planets in our solar system and pretty much anything outside, outside of, of the earth, even then the moon, you, you think about like, Oh, it, you know, there's like um, tidal effects from the moon, but it's all distance related. You know, the tidal effect of another person is greater, you know, if they're standing next to you, than than the moon is there, And, you know, there's really no uh, possible way for them to influence things like your personality, right? Even, first of all, no way to influence you at all, let alone something like we know a little bit about what forms people's personalities. Uh, there is no evidence that personality or life choices or any of these big things in any way align to your astrological sign, whether it's your sun sign or any other, your stellar sign, your moon sign, whatever. You could parse it up in different ways. Doesn't really matter. There's nothing to back up any of it. Now, one of the things I hear from people who are trying to sort of retcon astrology, trying to, to come up with some semi-plausible way to make it sound, make it make sense. And what about quantum effects? You know, uh, qu quantum mechanics says that even things that are light years away could be entangled. You're not entangled with Jupiter. It's not how quantum mechanics works. It doesn't work on like this macroscopic level. And also... Why would it matter that Jupiter is in the constellation of Gemini? How does that work? That's magical thinking, right? It's magic to think that that would have any effect. Um, so I don't throw quantum mechanics around. Good rule of thumb, unless you're one of the few quantum physicists in the world who actually understand current quantum theory, don't throw out quantum mechanics to justify your woo belief or anything. You don't understand it. It, that's it. You, you, unless you're one of those few people, you have no business invoking quantum mechanics to justify something weird just because quantum mechanics is weird and you don't understand that either. Don't do it. You're just going to embarrass yourself. But we could put mechanism aside and say, well, is there any evidence of an effect of an, any kind of anomaly, any kind of thing going on that could correlate with? No, there isn't. It's been studied to death for decades. It's, a, it's typical of this kind of research where there's a lot of noise and people will cherry pick or try to find some kind of pattern in the noise. But we have a lot of experience and knowledge on how to evaluate whether or not there is a real genuine signal in scientific data versus just background noise. And when you do that kind of standard scientific analysis of all the research that's been done, it's pretty clear that there's no signal. 
astrology is not true. So don't believe in it. It's a waste of time. If you want to improve yourself or you know, be introspective about yourself or whatever, that's great. Do that with something legitimate. You know, you don't use it with pseudoscience. It's just going to be a distraction. It's going to lead you to make irrational decisions. You know, believing in stuff that's not real can have a potential downside. It could be harmful. So, you know, it's interesting that there's this new infatuation with astrology, but hopefully we'll get the message out there like, no, it's been nonsense for 2000 years. It's still utter and complete nonsense. Don't believe, you know, what anyone says about, you know, who's promoting belief in astrology. The research is all out there. It was done 30 years ago. It was completely debunked 30 years ago. It's just all out there still. You know, find some good scientific skeptical analysis or breakdown of astrology before you dive into it or start reshaping your life around it. It really is just pure magic.